Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today I thought I'd do something that I've never done before, and that's make ATC cards, artist trading cards. Now I have a couple here that were given to me by uh, some friends of mine, which are very nice, and I'm going to use those sort of as my model. And I've been studying some YouTube videos as well about how to do ATC cards, and basically, from what I can figure out, ATC cards are basically just miniature forms of art journaling pages. So all the things you would do on an art journal page, you can do on an ATC card. You're just going to be working in a smaller format. So to get started with this, I want to create a sheet of background material. And so I've taken a piece of 100 pound watercolor um, paper and I've gessoed it already and let that dry. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some texture to this by putting down a stencil in several different space places on here and using some of the Ranger's texture paste uh, in the mat, I'm going to apply that all over this and let that dry and that'll be my first layer. As time goes by I'm going to add more color to it, some rubber stamping, some more stencil work, things like that until this whole page is filled. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it down into ATC size cards which I believe are about is it two and a half inches? Let me do a quickie measure here. Yeah two and a half inches by three and a half inches yep three and a half inches so two and a half by three and a half and uh, then I'll add some embellishments to them so we'll see how this works out so I have my texture paste right here and I'm just going to put it on I'm, I'm going to start off the page a little bit and just as if I was doing an actual page in one of my uh, art journals. I'm not going to be too concerned about how accurately and complete I spread this texture paste. And I got a little color off my stencil from a previous use, but that's okay. And I have a little bit of paste right there that I don't want there. Not that's going to cause me a lot of grief. I think I'll put another one down here. And the whole point of doing this with the modeling paste, which is not something I think you have to do, but I did see this in one video and I like the effect. And I'm not putting it on really thick because I don't want a lot of dimension to these cards, not as a bottom layer anyways. I just want to get some texture on the paper that when I can go over it with some color, I may use some spray colors. Um, I might use some watercolor. We'll see. That'll be make it somewhat interesting. Let's put one up here. Okay, and I'm just wondering if I should put some, I've got a little bit here where I don't want it. Again, it doesn't really matter. Um, 
maybe I'll put a little off to the side over here. Oops. And maybe just a little over here. Okay, so I've got my texture paste happening. I'm just going to close up this jar so things don't dry out. And again, I've got a little bit here where you don't want it, but I guess that's going to add extra texture. I'm not going to panic over that. So I'm going to let this dry, probably use the heat dryer on it, and uh, clean up a little bit and then come back and do some more things. So I used a heat gun on my texture paste, and this is Ranger's texture paste as opposed to modeling paste from someplace like Golden or Liquitex. And the reason I use that is because it actually can be color, colorized, and I used it in the matte finish. If I'd used a gloss or one of the other ones, it might act as a resist. And now I'm going to apply some watercolor, and I think the easiest way to do that is to get out my Jane Davenport uh, Mermaid uh, paints, what do they call them? The, um, well, I'm not sure, but they're the mermaid ones, you know, the water brush type thing with watercolor in it. And I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to wet with my spray bottle and I'm just going to tap some color around random spots. And I'm just going to let the, the colors sort of run together. And just see what happens here. Now, I'm not worried about making a mistake on this because it's only another layer and there'll be other layers covering things up. Maybe get a little spritz of water. Get the color moving a bit. Color doesn't seem to want to run out of this yellow one. I'm just trying to get a, a good base of color all over this. I'm just kind of using all of her colors. I'm 
And I really like her colors. They're very bold. Let's give this a little shot here. Let's get the water. The colors running a little bit. Let's do a little wipe up here. A little blotting. Let's add some, a little bit more color. Okay, I think I'm going to hit this with the heat gun and maybe add a second layer just to get a little bit more bold to this, so I'll be back. Okay, so I've dried this and it's a little pale for my liking, so I'm going to uh, darken a little bit by using some of my dilution ink sprays. And the problem with ink, uh, dilution ink sprays is you have very little control as to where they're going to go. So I have covered my work area with some newsprint and some paper towels uh, to catch the overspray. And I'm not going to put a lot of this on here, but we'll see what happens. That's probably good enough for that one. And a little this one. Now this is really bold colors here, so that's good. That's what I wanted. And maybe just a little bit more of the blue again. Okay. Now, these I can probably make run a little bit. If I add some water to them, but you know, just let them run on their own right now. Just to get some patterning in here, a little texture. And yeah, it's still running a little bit, and that's okay. Okay. Um, got a little heavy stuff up there, but I'm just going to blot that a little bit. Even blotting it adds a little texture. Okay, so I'm going to hit that with the heat gun. And next I think I'll do a little bit of stencil work. So I've grabbed this stencil from Tim Holtz. This is a lattice work, THS019. And I've got two colors of stays on ink. And I'm using St. Valentine's, which is a red, and a gothic purple. Now the reason I'm using stays on is because I'm going to be applying wet layers on top of this. And I don't want the ink to smear. In fact, 
I've put the Delusions ink down here already, and it is water activated when it, even when it's dry. So I may have to spray this with a fixative before um, I cut them up into ATC size cards and add my other embellishments to it. But right now we're just going to concentrate on a light layer of stays on to create these patterns. So I'll just start with this and. Um, I'm just putting this in a couple of spots and I'm letting it overlap the uh, texture paste okay let's go to the purple Now I'm using new pads, so sometimes it takes a little while for the pad to get juicy enough. And maybe use a little bit more of the red again. Okay, that's enough of that. I think um, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun just to heat set it, and then I'm going to come back and use some rubber stamps. So I've picked out this rubber stamp that has a butterfly and some flourishes on it, and it says something on it as well. Usually my go-to for something like this would be a script stamp, but I'm trying to break away from that. I'm actually going to use something that has a little bit more of a definite pattern to it, and I'm going to use some black tuxedo black ink from Memento because it is a permanent ink as well. And it doesn't really matter how good of an impression I get from this. It's just adding texture. And I'm just going to go all over this. And you can see in some spots I'm getting more of the whole image other parts I'm only getting part of an image but again that doesn't really matter to me and we'll do a couple of ghosts just to clean off the stamp okay well I think that's looking pretty good for a background right now. I don't think I need to add anything else at this point. So I'm going to hit this with the heat gun, but I am going to also put a light fixative spray over the top of it, and I'll show you what I mean. If I can find it on. I'm going to use Krylon Low Odor Clear Matte Spray for this. Just going to give it a light spray, and that's going to keep the ink that I first used on here that is, is uh, water reactive from reacting when I get to the point of gluing down other embellishments on these. So hit it with the heat gun first to set the ink, 
hit it with that, let it have a few minutes to dry. This only takes about five minutes to dry, and you can also do it with a heat gun, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've dried the um, clear coat, the fixative, on top of this, and so now this is all pretty much waterproof, and um, now I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to take it over to my cutter, and that's going to be off camera, so I'll just pause the camera here in a second. Um, and I'm going to cut these down into ATC cards and see how many I get out of this one sheet. Okay, so I've cut my big sheet down into uh, ATC size cards and out of a 9 by 12 sheet of 100 pound watercolor paper, I was able to get 8 full size ATC cards. Now I have a few little scraps left over, but I am not going to throw these out because I may be able to punch these to use for some elements on here or um, I'll use them on another future project. Um, what I also did was I took my stays on timber brown ink and I went around all of the outside edges of all the cards and I saved one to show you what I did. Just this adds a little bit of a border and some more depth, uh, definition and depth to each ATC card. So simple as that. So these are my backgrounds. Now it's time to work on the embellishments on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to th go through my stash of uh, ephemera and other pieces and uh, just select a bunch of random pieces and come back and I'll start assembling these. Okay, so I've gone into my stash and I pulled up a few packages of things. This is a brand new package. It's Tim Holtz's Ideology uh, Snippets. Um, this is another Tim Holtz one that I've used some of the pieces out of it called Thrift Shop. And then I have a whole bunch of mixed pieces that I have um, scanned and cut using my Cricut, um, Cricut Maker. And then I have this package um, from Kaiser Craft called uh, Betsy's Couture. And um, there might be some elements in there as well. So the best thing I think I can do is let some go through this new package first, see what's in here. I'm just going to open this up and dump the lot right here on my table. How many pieces are supposed to be in this? It says there's 111 pieces, so let's see what we've got. And I'll just pull out some things I think I can use. The little butterfly is good. Now I have to keep them fairly small. So we'll see. Some little bits here. Um, flowers are always nice. Bingo card might be fun. That's an old ad. Here's another little piece. Some little stamps. Picture some people in front of an Eiffel Tower. This is actually a great little package because it's got a lot of little elements in it. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just sorting out the small bits and pieces. Some really tiny ones in here too. Well, there's one with a bunch of people standing in front of a car. So anyways, this could get a little bit tedious watching me sort out these little bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, continue going through my stash here of things, and uh, then I'll return. So I've gone through all those package of snippets, and I think I'm going to primarily use just those for the background and I chose a focal image for each one of my cards and I chose these from Tim Holtz's um, what do they call this um, 
can't remember now. It's uh, ideology. Oh, paper dolls. These are the paper dolls collection. And in that collection, they come in three different sizes. So I picked the smaller of the sets. And I'm going to use those in the foreground and use these to build a background. And I'm going to glue them all down using my Tombow Aqua glue. So let's start with these young ladies. And I'm not thinking too hard about this. I do want to be able to add a chat sticker to these as well. So let's just see here. They don't have to be in the center. Put them off to the side, move that up, move that down. I'm just going to lay them all out and uh, see how it looks. You don't need a lot of elements on these. Oops, a little fiddly because they're smaller. Okay, and then these ladies, let's see. And maybe we'll give her some flowers. And you can see once you get going on these, um, let's see, I'm having a tendency here to put everything near the bottom, my focal images, but maybe if I move them up a bit and uh, I want to put something across the top, some words, that kind of thing. I can't stay away from butterflies. I love butterflies as embellishments. Again, let's move these people up a little bit. Need another little element. Yeah, let's see what are we going to do with these.
Okay. I think that's all I'm going to do with these right now. Now, should I go around every one of these little pieces with some ink to give them a bit of a border? Um, I might, on some of the ones that have a bit of a white border all the way around them, like these butterflies and these pictures that are here. But I think those are the only ones I'm going to do with that. And then I got to have to glue them all down. So I'm going to do that and then come back and show you the end result. Okay, so I've finished my artist trading cards. Everything is stuck down. And then I added some little um, sayings, uh, ones that I thought uh, worked with the pictures that I had here. But I have to admit, I wasn't all that um, particular about what these said at the top. Um, you might be if you're doing them by theme. I didn't really do these by theme. I just did what I liked with the stuff I had. Um, so I added these to the top of these cards and to the bottom of these ones. And on the back, I found a template for creating these labels on Google. I just did a search for artist trading cards backs and came up with these. I put them in my word processor and printed them out and they printed out as one sheet, cut them down to size, and I used my Xyron to glue them to the back. You could just use ordinary glue to whatever, but the Xyron's fast and easy uh, with that kind of thing. So these are where people put their information, like the title of their card, their name, the date, any other info. I'm just going to leave those blank for now. But here we go. So yeah, these are kind of fun. And uh, I can see lots of things that you can do with these besides trading them. You could use them as the front panel of a card. Um, you could use them as uh, embellishments or pieces on an art journal page or in a scrapbook. Um, you could put them on a tag. So there's all kinds of possibilities here. They're kind of fun to make. And what I really like about making the artist trading cards is it's all the elements of doing an art journal page, but in miniature. So, you know, if you want to do a quickie feed your, your need to do an art journal page, but you don't have a lot of time, this might be the way to go. So. I've shown you everything now. I think they turned out pretty good. I'm really excited about them. Um, I am going to take a picture of each one of these and I will use that picture. I'll put it in my computer and I can use it to create uh, larger cards uh, later on or even more background elements. And um, yeah, and I might spray them with some of that uh, clear coat uh, fixative again just to protect them because these are the kind of things that might get handled a lot. Uh, by people and it would just keep everything nice and clean. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you for the next technique.